Ford approaches the football, and away we go tonight in Case Western Reserve Spartans football. Cronin will accept the touchback, and the Spartans will come out first and 10 here in the first quarter. Spartans are five and one, and the President's five and one as well. Eddie, let's check that starting Case offense. Taking a look at the offensive line, you're going to have Nate Lewis out of Chagrin Falls starting at left tackle, filed, followed by Ryan DeMarie at left guard. Gage Blair at center, Dante Capiccioni at right guard, and followed by Tyler Hamilton at right tackle. Hamilton, the big 6-5 senior out of Wyandotte, Michigan. Snap goes to Cuda. Looks to cut it back upfield after first looking at the outside. He dives ahead, maybe gets one, second and nine for the Spartans. And Dave, we've talked about Rob Kuda running with the football and how well he protects himself. Well, he's going to have to protect himself against the big, sturdy front seven of Washington and Jefferson. There's some serious size and athleticism in that front seven. So Rob Kuda is going to have to take care of himself as well as the football. Second down and nine. Empty backfield, five receiver set for Cuda. Plenty of time on the play clock. He glances over to the sideline, takes the snap, quick drop. Now he's in trouble, the rush coming, and he is sacked. Washington and Jefferson with a big defensive play earlier. You mentioned the Chagrin Falls connection for the Spartans. Right there, Ryan Snedeker out of Kenston High School makes the defensive play. So a loss of eight, and it's third down and 17. Third and 17. Kuda again, an empty backfield. Five receivers. Now he wants to run it straight up the middle, and he gets tripped up before he can really get into some open space. And he gets out to the 22-yard line, a pickup of four. Looked like an ankle tackle might have bailed out the presidents there, Eddie. Yeah, and you're not going to fool this president's defense here. I mean, they are just so balanced and so well prepared. I mean, they uh, cover the entire field, you know, gap to gap. This is a team that plays a lot of great zone defense, and they're not going to be fooled by uh, some trick plays here this season. Football is at the 21-yard line of the Spartans. Burke back to punt it. There goes the left foot, and it's a high spiraling kick that's going to take a Case Western Reserve bounce and go out of bounds in Washington and Jefferson territory. It looks like it goes out at the 43-yard line, so that's where the presidents will come out. Their quarterback is Pete Coughlin. He's a junior, and Eddie, they like to sling the ball around the field 307 yards per game through the air. Coughlin in the shotgun. They'll give it to Ruffing, their premier back, and he is tripped up for no gain, trying to run over the left guard. And uh, they'll be looking at a second and long from the 44-yard line. Second and nine, no score. First quarter here, Case three and out on their first possession. Now the Presidents moving left to right here in the first quarter, clad in their traveling white uniforms. Coglin, a screen pass right over the middle, caught, lots of running room, down the left side, 30, and run out of bounds near the 29-yard line. That one hauled in by Jesse Zubik, the 5'10 sophomore who had a head of steam going when he caught that pass. A pretty conservative play. Coughlin dumps it underneath and lets his receiver do the rest. A 26-yard completion, and now Ruffing goes straight up the middle and gets close to the 25-yard line before he's wrapped up by Gavin Sandage. And like Case, Washington and Jefferson, they like to play that hurry-up offense. They're going to try to rush everybody to the line and try to catch the defense off guard. Second down and five after Ruffing gets five for them on first down. Swing pass to Ruffing, and he's on the far side, gets outside the numbers, and finally steps out of bounds. Short of the first down, he is at the 22-yard line of the Spartans, and it's third and two in addition, for the Presidents. In addition to the, in the uh, roughing rushing, he's also got 19 catches, 202 yards, including a long of 40. So this guy will get involved in the passing attack as well. You said it in our pregame show, Eddie, a complete player. Ryan Ruffing, he is a senior out of, where else? Thomas Jefferson High School mm -hmm. at Pittsburgh, VA. 
Coughlin chased out of the pocket. Now he runs for it. Surin got a hand on him. And then he's finally finished off by Aaron Weisberg, the senior, who makes the tackle. And that forces fourth down for the Presidents. Great surge by the Spartans defense. They're going for it. Coughlin slaps his hands together, takes the snap, a handoff to Ruffing. He's grabbed in the backfield and forced to the turf by K.J. Peterson, and the Spartans' defense holds. That is exactly the way you want to start off this football game. Make a statement on fourth down. Washington and Jefferson has converted over 50% of their fourth down plays, and you got one of the top tailbacks in the league, and you get to them early. That's how you stop one of the top tier running backs in Division Three football. You put a body on him, and before you get one body, you get two of them on him, and then you get yourself the football back. Football is at the 25-yard line as the Spartans take over. Full house backfield. Kuda hands it up the middle. And I believe that's Adam Hockman carrying the football. And they go to the fullback who gets the three-yard pickup on first down. Second down and seven. Boy, K.J. Peterson, the Pennsylvania native, wrapped up roughing. He had seven tackles a week ago. And a big one here to start his night against the Presidents. Kuda wings it out. It's caught by Herb out near the numbers on the left and knights his way forward, picks up about five. Spartans looking at a third and a long two. Can you talk about staying true to yourself and not changing who you are? That's a play that the Spartans love to run because they get great blocking from their wide receivers. I saw two solid blocks right there from the receiving core that got them closer to a first down conversion. 31st reception of the year for the senior Brian Erb. Third down and two. Kuda takes the snap, pitches it out to Kanganelli, working his way forward, falls short of the first down marker. They needed to get right to the 35 yard line and he's short by well, maybe just a little less than a yard, Eddie, and it looks like the Spartans will have to punt this one away. And that's going to be really important for Anthony Canganelli to have a, a good game here this evening because he just provides a different flavor into this offense. You're used to the quick strikes that uh, Kuda and company can follow. You want somebody to bruise in between the tackles, but unfortunately not enough for a first there. Murhat and Liss back deep for Washington and Jefferson. Fourth and one from the 34, punted away by Burke. It takes a W and J bounce and goes out of bounds at about the 46 yard line. It's gonna be a 22 yard punt with no return. And the presidents will come back out with 9.01 to go here in the first quarter. We have no score. Spartans have been unable to get a first down on their first two possessions. Presidents on their first possession marched down the field, but then gave it up on downs on a big tackle for loss by K.J. Peterson. Coughlin back out for the Presidents. Three receivers stacked on the left. They'll go to roughing straight up the middle. He gets across midfield right along the hash mark. Picks up close to five yards. It'll be second down and five. And roughing really just one of, if not the best back in Division Three football and going in between the tackles. We talked about his ability to be physical and to bruise opposing linebackers. We're going to be seeing a lot of that here this evening. Snap goes back to Coughlin, looking to throw it. Now he's in trouble. Play breaking down. Here comes the pressure. He's outside the numbers near the sideline. He is whacked by Peterson and forced all the way out of bounds. He is at the 47-yard line. So he picked up two. They're looking at a third and three. And you can see early the sense of urgency on this Spartans defense, especially, especially in the eyes of K.J. Peterson. Brought very quick pressure that time and put Coughlin on the run. He's a junior quarterback, gets the snap in the shotgun, looks downfield, fires it. It's caught. Looks to be good for a first down. Daniel Liss, his first catch. Liss, the senior out of Washington, PA. Seven catches a week ago, his first of the night, and it's good for a first down, exactly what they needed, a three-yard pickup. First and 10 from the Spartans, 43. Football on the left hash, Coughlin to throw it. 
They go to the middle of the field again. It's caught by Jesse Zubik, who had that big catch and run on their first possession. And he gets to the 38-yard line. It's a pickup of five. Looks like the game plan is to get him involved in space early underneath. A couple catches already for the young man. Coglin. Fakes a handoff to Ruffing, goes straight up the middle. He is grabbed and forced to the turf. And there on the tackle was Dayton Snyder, just a yard short of the first down. So he picks up four, and it's third and one for the Presidents. Coglin hands it to Ruffing, and they stack him up, but I believe he might have gotten the first down, Eddie, with his forward progress. Yeah, it does appear so, and it's going to be close. And you, you like the way that the front seven of the Spartans has played early, but again, it's just a, a tough play for a defense to make right there on third and so short to go. I believe they're going to take a measurement here, which gives us a chance, Eddie, to check that Spartans defensive unit that played so well a week ago. Yeah, only 128 yards, I believe, given up by the Spartans defense all of last week against Geneva. But you take a look at the front three, and you've got Dayton Snyder, Nate Nejedal, and Justin Williams as the three down linemen, and then that linebacking core, led by the inside linebacker Aaron Weisberg in his fourth year out of American Heritage High School. And then alongside K.J. Peterson at the other outside linebacker spot in his fourth year at 6'1", 200 pounds. Well, they were, as you see, short of the first down. It's fourth and inches. Can Case hold again on fourth down? It'll be tough. Coglin hands it to Ruffing. Straight ahead, has the first down this time. Hit quickly by Peterson and Sandage. And now they say he didn't get it. The Spartans hold on fourth down again by Ruffing surge toward the line of scrimmage there, Eddie. I thought, sure, he would get the five or so inches they needed, but uh, the officials immediately say, no, it's going back the other way. Yeah, Dave, I was with you. I thought this was going to be a first down, and W&J was going to move the chains, but a very fortunate spot for the Spartans, and they'll get decent field position for the first time in this game. And this one was not measured. It's uh, no, a, an no, eyeball it wasn't. job. So the Spartans take over on downs, and again, it was K.J. Peterson leading the charge with the big tackle. Kuda back to throw it, fires a high spiral middle of the field intended for Luke DeFrancesco, and it's incomplete. Second down and 10 for the Spartans. We have no score, 6.28 to go in a fast-moving first quarter. Yeah, it really has, and really going to be key for Rob Kuda with his accuracy here in this game. I mean, Washington and Jefferson, they are very accurate. Almost 70% of their passes are completed, so it's going to be important for Rob Kuda to follow suit. Kuda on the season has completed 64% of his passes, 18 TDs, zero interceptions. Back to throw, guns it to the right side, incomplete. Looked like it hit the back of Brendan Lynch, the intended target. There was a crowd over there. Kuda had to get rid of the ball quickly with the pressure coming. Third down and 10. Spartans have not yet gotten a first down. A little bit of friendly fire right there, Dave. You were right. They had one of their offensive linemen out in the flat trying to throw a block, but unfortunately that one falls to the ground. Third and 10. Football marked at the Case Western Reserve 34-yard line. Spartans operating in their own territory. Football on the right hash. The snap goes back to Kuda. Looks to throw, fires it to the right side, and it's too high, intended again for DeFrancesco. He was out there in one-on-one -on -one coverage as the uh, defensive support was provided by O'Shea Anderson, the sophomore. Anderson, one of their top defensive players. Anderson on the season, 35 tackles, one sack, one INT. Fourth and 10 for the Spartans from their own 34. And Dave, you talked about it earlier, the win. It's going to be interesting to see those throws from Rob Kuda and where they end up at. Let's see if he can hold on to the ball and try to guide that football where he wants it to go. Thus far, the wind has had an effect on it. Burke with a booming punt. Takes a big hop back near the 20. Fielded by the Presidents. 
a somewhat unwise move to field that one on the big hop. And it is going to be a long field in front of the presidents. That one was grabbed by Luke Merhat. And then he was going the wrong way. It was tackled. Sure, exactly where they're marking this one. Looks like it'll be at the 14 yard line. W and, Day and J just trying to do a little bit too much there, and luckily the Spartans were the beneficiary of that. That was a 50 yard punt. Coglin hands it to Ruffing, breaking to the outside, bounces further past the numbers, and he's grabbed by Cody Calhoun and wrestled to the ground after a pickup of close to 12. First down run for Ryan Ruffing. Well, Ruffing all by his lonesome averages 115 yards on the ground per game. I mean, he can get long runs as well and 13 touchdowns for that young guy right there. 12 yards on the first down scamper. First and 10 from the 26 yard line. Pass complete from Coglin. A little slant and it's caught over there for the first time tonight, the tight end. Michael Giampol, the 6'2 senior out of Pittsburgh, makes the catch. Giampol had a catch last week for 22 yards. That one goes for seven. Second and three, another quick strike to Giampol. Two straight to the tight end, right in the middle of the field. He's wrapped up and tackled at about the 43-yard line. That's a pickup of 10, and another first down for Washington and Jefferson. So they're moving the football here. 5.20 to go in the first quarter. And Eddie, starting to see just a few little bits of rain dropping now for the first time tonight. Straight ahead running for Ruffing. And he hits the pile. Good for about two yards there for the big man, Ryan Ruffing. Second down and seven. And we were expected to get rain really for the better part of the whole afternoon, but you know, I'm just hoping that Mother Nature hasn't saved it all for the evening. Second and seven, the snap goes back to Coughlin, a pump fake, dumps the pass off to Ruffing, and he is grabbed and tackled in the backfield by Gavin Sandage. That'll be a loss of maybe one, maybe no gain. We'll see exactly where they mark the football, but that was a big play by Sandage. Yeah, that's a great play. That's exactly what you want to see from your senior leader, Gavin Sandage, right there, making a Great tackle in the open field, and it only took one Spartan defender to bring down uh, Washington and Jefferson that time. So that's what you love to see, physicality on defense. No gain, third and seven from the 47. Coughlin in trouble, he's grabbed and tackled. Sacked by the Spartans. Case Western Reserves, Tyler Doty grabs Coughlin, who comes up a little gimpy after that sack. There you see it. Doty recording the big sack, and they force a long fourth down. That's a loss of 11, Eddie. Yeah, and you know, in retrospect, not much progress has been made by Washington and Jefferson offensively, one of the top offenses that the Spartans will play all year. And really, the Spartans' defense has held their own. They're off to a fantastic start. Spartans suspecting that something might have been planned is... Kevin Mikas was back to punt. And so they take a timeout. 3.39 to go. We have no score in the first quarter. And Greg Debelak just wanted to make sure he had the proper alignment and personnel out there. Justin Fan is back deep to receive this kick. Big defensive play so far tonight. K.J. Peterson has been in on three big tackles. And that time, Tyler Doty forcing the fourth down with the sack. Tyler Doty, that 11-yard tackle for loss. Here's Mikas with the punt. Win behind it. Fan catches it at the 26-yard line. Right along the hash marks on the right, he's wrapped up, holds onto the football. And he gets out close to the 31-yard line. So that'll be a five-yard return for Fan. Very nice punt with that wind behind it. Was able to sail a little bit. I was down on the field with our in-booth producer, Eddie Greg Wilson. Mm -hmm. And the wind really moving that football around. Uh, not only 
on kicks, but also just on passes. So it doesn't have to be way up to get the benefit of that wind. Cuda back on with the Spartans, first and 10 from the Case Western Reserve 31 yard line. Again, they put it on the ground, short gain. See who carried that one for Case Western Reserve. Kanganelli on the carry, his second of the night. Last week for Anthony Kanganelli, 16 carries, 67 yards. He has rushed for five touchdowns on the season. Second down and eight after a two-yard pickup. No score, three minutes to go here in the opening quarter. Case Western Reserve and Washington and Jefferson. Cuda goes to the outside, pass caught by Hockman, puts his head down, tries to stay in bounds for the extra yard, but he was out of bounds just a couple yards shy of the first down marker. A pickup of six on the screen pass to Hockman. And with that win, going to be really important for these receivers to be able to make plays after the catch because as we saw a couple plays before, it's hard to throw deep footballs when the wind is coming right in your face. Third down and two. Kuda with Kanganelli in the backfield to his right. They will go to Anthony on the handoff. He did not get there. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Nicely done by the presidents. Washington and Jefferson, five and one on the season. Same exact record as the Spartans, and now Washington and Jefferson will take a timeout as Case is looking at a fourth and two, and the Spartans were lined up to go for it. That was well played. That was a great chess match right there by Greg Debelek, forcing Washington and Jefferson to take a timeout. He didn't have to actually call the play. The Spartans didn't in order to get that result that they got right there. That was just a chess match that Greg Debelak in his 13 seasons being a veteran head coach knows that he's pushing the envelope with Washington and Jefferson, forcing them to burn an early timeout. Well, speaking of the coaches, Eddie, Greg Debelak for the Spartans in his 12th season, picked up his 80th win last week in that victory over Geneva, 80 and 39. On the other sideline, Mike Sirianni, in his 13th season at uh, Washington and Jefferson, played his college ball at Mount Union. An overall record of 116 and 27. That's an 81% winning percentage, which ranks fourth among all active coaches among all divisions in the NCAA. Spartans are going for it, or at least they're going to try to draw them offside. And now a whistle, and the Spartans take a timeout. That's the second called timeout by the Spartans with 2.13 to go here in the opening quarter. We have no score. We'll take a timeout here. Back with more after this 30-second timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Well, the Spartans now get into punt formation. Football is at the 39-yard line. Burke positioned at his own 25, and he'll put the left foot into it. And again, great hang time. And it drops down, and Cody Calhoun will down the football uh, back at the 30-yard line. That's a 31-yard kick in the air, no return. And the Presidents will come out first and 10 in a scoreless game with 2.03 to go in the first quarter. And Dave, you know, I, I would have to say that Washington and Jefferson's come out a little frustrated. I mean, they've had three drives already. I mean, they were stopped twice on fourth down, and they've got no points to show for the fourth quarter. That's not something they're used to. They've gotten out to great early starts this year. Coughlin throws it out, caught. That's Liss on the right side makes for the sideline and gets out of bounds near the 39 yard line. Daniel Liss, well, he's quick, 5'11", 185. He's a senior out of Chartier's Houston High School. 
42 catches now on the season, three touchdown receptions. Coughlin to throw, fires a high spiral to the far side of the field. It's incomplete. Target was Eric Scott, and the pass overthrown. So Coughlin for the first time tonight showing that arm strength. Yeah, I was going to say, and the Spartans uh, defensive unit and the, the defensive uh, coaches got a real good look at the arm strength right there. And you're going to keep that in mind for the next couple plays. And, you know, the, the, the defensive backs uh, looking to step up here as they're going to be expecting those long throws because he's just got a rocket for an arm back there. The offensive coordinator of the Presidents is Steve Spence. Ruffing is wrapped up, tried to bounce out to the left and turn it upfield, but he was quickly tackled by the Spartans. There defensively was Dayton Snyder. He got immediate help. Third down and 10 now. Coughlin back to throw, three-step drop, fires it to the outside, pass is caught, and it's good for a first down. Zubik hauls it in with his feet just inbounds near the case sideline. We'll see it again. Well, the Spartans went with a 3-3-5 three, three, defense, adding an extra defensive back, but it did not help that time. A great play in the near sideline right there, and Washington and Jefferson moves the chains. Zubik second catch of the night, first and 10. Coughlin to throw it. Scott makes the catch. Some yardage after the reception. Tackled by Nick Kwan, middle of the field. The football resting now at the 43-yard line. A pickup of five, and it's second down and five. No score and under a minute to go here in the first quarter. They'll pitch it out to Ruffing, running the no huddle. Ruffing gets the first down as he dives outside the numbers close to the 35 yard line make it the 36 first and 10 and boy they are up to the line and ready to run 37 seconds left in the first quarter Coglet gets a nice block from roughing runs to the left he'll tuck it now makes for the sideline and gets out of bounds he stepped out at the 31 so he picks up five Second down, we'll call it a long five here, maybe closer to second and six. So give Coughlin a four yard pickup. He can run the football. Three rushing touchdowns for him this year. Second down and six. They're operating in Spartans territory. Ruffing gets the handoff, dives ahead, gets close to the 30 and that'll be the final play of the first quarter. So the Spartans and Presidents in a defensive battle. No score as we go to the second quarter next here on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Ford Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular spectacular accommodations. No score as we go to the second quarter. David Wilson, Eddie Jansen, Mike Becker, our producer and director, and a tip of the cap to our Media Vision crew unveiling for the first time replays on our video webcast. So we appreciate all the hard work putting that together. Great to see some of the replays already tonight. No score here as we go to the second quarter. It is President's Football, Washington and Jefferson University, making their first trip to Cleveland since the 1980s. Coughlin to throw it, third and five. He's in trouble and he's going to go down back at the 40 yard line. That's going to be a loss of nine. Well, this Spartan defense, after ha allowing just 128 total yards last week, they're playing with some real confidence right now. And they're going to be coming after the backfield of Washington and Jefferson consistently on every play. And already 
a couple of early sacks here in this football game. That's going to send a message to the O-line of W&J that they're going to be sending the pressure. Fourth and 13 after the sack. Here is the kick, and it's going to be received by Fan, and then he is thrown to the ground. Boy, what a, a tackle on the special team's coverage by Jordan Yates. Spartans will be pinned back deep in their own territory. Football is going to be marked at the 14-yard line, first and 10. Nice kick by the punter, Kevin Mikas. Low line drive kick, keeping it down out of that gale force wind. Spartans now with the wind at their back here in the second quarter. We'll see if that might benefit Rob Kuda. Empty backfield, three receivers on the left, two on the right. So a spread formation by the Spartans. Kuda will get rid of it quickly to Herb. A low throw cradled by Herb right on the numbers at the 20 yard line, but I believe they will mark it back at about the 18, which is where Herb came down with the football. Just underway second quarter, pick up a four, second down and six from the Spartans 18 yard line and a scoreless game here in the first quarter. Now Kuda keeps it, breaks into the defensive backfield, gets out close to the 27-yard line. A pickup of nine on the play and good for a first down. And that's the Spartans' first first down of the contest coming into this drive. 12 plays for 13 yards, about time for that ignition to start going. Kuda again keeps it on the ground. This one stacked up by the Presidents. Second down and eight. Second and eight, 13, 15 to go. We're in the second quarter, opening half here at DeSanto Field at Case Western Reserve University. Spartans in Washington and Jefferson. Cuda takes the snap, empty backfield. He wants to run it again. Gets across the 30 and out close to the 35-yard line. He is picked off there before he can really high-step it for some significant yardage. Jalen Morris, you see, coming in there and tripping him up. Morris, last week, 11 tackles in their win against Bethany. And Kuda trying to run for it again as the Spartans run the hurry up. Looks like he gets out to the 40-yard line, and it's good for a first down. Rob Kuda and company trying to throw W and J a change up with him running with the football. He'll throw it out to Lynch now. Gets outside the numbers, makes the catch, and gets out to the 45 yard line. He's run out of bounds there. Coming up to make the defensive stop, Dan Graziano. That wide receiver screen, Eddie, you mentioned it earlier. Spartans can run that in their sleep. And you also saw the speed and athleticism of the Washington and Jefferson defense. Didn't take long to bring down that receiver. Kuda straight up the middle, across midfield. Gets now to the 46-yard line. A pickup of eight for Kuda and another first down. And the Spartans running a quicker version of the hurry up than you've ever seen before. They give a screen out to Herb, he makes the catch, but is tripped up in the backfield. And so he goes down, no gain. Bryce Merrill on the defensive stop for the Presidents. Second and 11 after a loss of one. Right now the Spartans taking a little breather as they get to the line of scrimmage, but still a no huddle look. Five receiver spread formation for the sophomore Rob Kuda. He'll throw it over the middle and it's batted down by Jalen Morris. Boy, a rejection by Jalen Morris, the senior out of Washington, PA. You want to make sure that you don't tip your hand by getting to the line too quickly and then showing the defense the type of formation that you're going to run. And needless to say, Washington and Jefferson right there, they saw it coming and they were able to knock down that pass. Well, now a flag comes out. It's our first of the night. They may be ready to pick that one up. No flag on the play. I mean, there was a flag, but uh, they're going to pick it up and 
Say that was an inadvertent marker. Third and 11. Football marked at the 47-yard line of the Presidents. Cuda back to throw. Good protection. Middle of the field. Pass incomplete. Looking for the tight end, Ethan Albers. And into quadruple coverage there. Yeah, a little bit of a risky pass right there by Rob Cuda. Fortunately, no turnover was committed right there, but that is the type of quarterback that Rob Kuda is. He's going to try to thread the needle here on this pass, and he's almost able to hook up with his man, but Washington and Jefferson, they're just too prepared right there. They had two white uniforms on the one gray uniform deep down the field. Case Western Reserve with their most formidable opponent of the season in Washington and Jefferson here tonight. No score, second quarter. Here is the punt from Jacob Burke with the wind behind him. That punt sails all the way out of the back of the end zone. It'll be a touchback. It'll come out to the 20 yard line. Burke with a 47 yard kick. The net of 27 when they bring it out to the 20. Boy, what a difference the wind makes in the punting game tonight. Yeah. Yeah, you said it, Dave. I mean, this is really turning into a battle for field position and Spartans have had some favorable starting field positions and not this time for Washington Jefferson though. They're deep inside their own 20. I believe this is their most unfavorable field position of the night. They'll swing it out on the far side to Zubik to the 25 out across the 30 and run out of bounds over there by Nick Kwan of the Spartans. It's good for a first down. And this is a very talented receiving core for Washington and Jefferson. We spent so much time talking about Ryan Ruffing and Pete Coughlin. Well, these receivers have made their fair share of plays, and the Spartans have to, have to take note of that. Zubik has been their most effective weapon tonight. Ruffing straight up the middle, found a nice hole, gets close to eight as he's brought down near the 38-yard line. Nice run for Ruffing on first down. Second down now and two. Football at the 38-yard line. Ruffing again straight up the middle. Has the first down and more. Is knocked down by Jordan Esteban short of midfield. He picks up 10. And it's another first down. First and 10 for the Presidents. Washington and Jefferson, three and one in the PAC. Back to throw Coglin in stride, pass caught, 35-30, down to the 25-yard line. And it's good for a first down and a whole bunch more for the Presidents. That one hauled in by the tight end, Asa Kostelnak, the 6-2 senior. And now, running to the outside, Zubik makes the catch and he is wiped out deep behind the line of scrimmage so they were not able to get around the edge as Nick Kwan came up defensively for the Spartans. Asa Kostelnak, the first catch of the night for him. Now it's second and 14 as the Presidents try to run the hurry up as we saw the Spartans do on their last possession. Coglin in trouble. Gets to the outside, still looking downfield. He'll just step it out of bounds with K.J. Peterson in hot pursuit for the Spartans. K.J. Peterson having a really good game, and as you had said, pursuing Coughlin relentlessly, but you look at the ability of Coughlin to change speeds. I mean, that just makes him such a difficult uh, guy to get to, especially from the quarterback position when you're way back there five yards behind the line of scrimmage. He's out of Upper St. Clair High School, just 5'10". He'll pump fake, stands in the pocket, good protection, goes to the outside, caught by Liss near the 20, down close to the 15-yard line. And he is down and tackled inbounds, I believe. Quan and Peterson there defensively, they were able to knock him out of bounds. 9.20 to go. So they started at the 20-yard line. They're now in the red zone on the Case Western Reserve 17. It is fourth and two. Coglin fires, pass caught by Zubik, first down inside the 10 yard line. So they go for it on fourth and two, and Coglin hooks up with Zubik. Football now at the eight yard line. It's the first conversion of the night. They missed their first two. Coglin, that was a big one. Back corner of the end zone, actually just inside the pylon near the goal line, intended for Liss. 
and it was just overthrown, Eddie, as we see there on the replay, just off the fingertips of Dan Liss. And boy, both of these teams in the hurry up mode tonight. And W and J finally getting that ignition going as they're trying to hurry up and put this score in the books first and early. Second and goal from the nine yard line. Coughlin in the shotgun. And now some movement and a procedure penalty is going to be whistled against Washington and Jefferson. So an untimely infraction will make it second and goal from the 13, make it the 14 yard line. Second and goal from the 14. And give a lot of credit to Cody Calhoun. He was way back in the secondary then sprinted right to the line. And I think that caught Washington Jefferson off guard, forcing some movement from their offensive line. Coughlin in the shotgun, has roughing blocking. Now back corner of the end zone, and it is incomplete. They were looking for Zubik back there, and Nick Kwan was there defensively for the Spartans. Just a little bit too deep by Coughlin right there. I mean, you can see the tight spirals that he's been throwing on this drive, but this one just had a little too much oomph on it. Washington and Jefferson able to get a hand on it, but luckily not much else. Rain starting to fall a little harder now at DeSanto Field. This is a big play. Third and goal from the 14. Coglet in trouble, dumps it off. Pass is caught by Ruffing to the 10. He's down to the five. He's going to go in for the touchdown. Ruffing able to pick his way forward. It's a 14-yard touchdown pass on third down. Brian Ruffing, his 48th career touchdown, the most of any active Division III player. And you had hoped that with the rain starting to come down that that would have sogged down the football, but it didn't. It's just strong enough for Coughlin to get the ball out of his hands, and then the skill position players do the rest. Ted Ford for the point after touchdown. The snap, the hold, and the kick. And it is up and good. Ryan Ruffing, his first receiving touchdown of the season, a 14-yard strike from Pete Coughlin. Seven to nothing, Washington and Jefferson. Case football, when we come back with more second quarter action, 8.49 to go before halftime. Back with more after this 30-second timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. consecutive Ford Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Back at DeSanto Field, low line drive kick is going to go all the way back inside the five yard line. Cronin picks it up, brings it back middle of the field along the hash mark and fortunately for the Spartans, he's able to get back out close to the 20 yard line. Special teams has been a hallmark of this Washington and Jefferson squad this year. Teams finding return yards on punts and kickoffs very hard to come by. That time Cronin was able to turn a near disaster into an acceptable situation for the Spartans. Seven to nothing as the president strike first here. 8.40 to go before halftime. Spartans back out offensively. We'll take a look at some updated stats momentarily. Kuda on first and 10 from his own 20 yard line, looks to throw it in the pocket, lofts it middle of the field, Herb diving, cannot haul it in. Defensive coverage by Tim Blair, the cornerback step for step with Herb as we see it again. 
Well, that football is probably at the very least a little bit damp at this point, so it's going to be a challenge for these wide receivers to get a hand on it and a firm grip on that football deep down the field. Unfortunately, they come up short on what really would have helped them out. 14-yard touchdown pass from Coughlin to Ruffing. That's the only score of the night so far. Kanganelli running it for Case Western Reserve, spins away from a tackler, gets close to the 30 and should have the first down, depending where they mark it. Boy, that was just uh, an array of moves right there by Kanganelli. That's the guy that you want to get going because he's the change-up to your fastball. They say no first down, but Hockman gets the first down. The fullback blasts through the line, gets across the 40, out to the 42-yard line, and the Spartans have a first and 10, and they go to that no huddle hurry up again. Hockman, second straight carry. Goes across the 45, gets to the 47-yard line, and this is where the Spartans have been very effective tonight, Eddie. Yeah, good to see the tailbacks getting involved in this game. Yeah, Kanganelli actually was the ball carrier and now carries it again. So Hockman got him the first down. Now two straight carries by Kanganelli, and it's third down and two. The football at midfield. Kanganelli again, slide stepping in the middle. Gets close to first down yardage. Is finally hit and dropped by Washington and Jefferson. The big left end, Tom Mara. The sophomore got Kanganelli on the turf. First and 10. Well, now that you're in enemy territory, this is where you want to cash in. I mean, you've already come a long way, but you've still got a little ways to go before you put points on the board. You really want to be able to follow up on Washington Jefferson's touchdown with a score of your own right here. Case with a couple of quick first downs. They have five now on the night. First and 10 from the 47-yard line. They'll give it again to Kanganelli. Powers his way forward. Gets about three, maybe four hard-earned yards. Second down and six, seven to nothing. Washington and Jefferson in the lead with under seven minutes to go here in the first half and a good football game. And the rain starting to fall now at DeSanto Field. Could come down in the form of a thunderstorm before this game is over. Kuda in the backfield with Hockman. Four receivers, two on each side. They have Zach Medved in at a slot receiver position on the right. He made some big catches last week. Kuda tries to run it. They'll catch him. Flag comes out as he is hit right at the line of scrimmage. And the clock will stop with 6.18 to go. Just too many white uniforms in there slowing down the Spartans offense. And they, needless to say, got the push that time. But going to have to check the... Uh, the penalty that I saw. Looks like it's going back into the pocket of the referee. It's gonna move the football in the other direction. It is against the Spartans. 40, they'll mark it back to the 42 yard line. And so the Spartans have about a mile to go. Second and 22 from their own 42-yard line after the walk-off. Kuda, high-arcing spiral down the right side intended for Herb, and it's overthrown. And the Spartans looking at a third and 22. He had a step on his defender, O'Shea Anderson. Yeah, this could have easily been a touchdown, but just a little too strong that time by Rob Kuda. We talked about that accuracy before, Dave, and it's going to be so crucial for Kudo to be able to hook up with his receivers so that they can be successful. And now the rain really falling, Eddie, and coming down sideways with that wind. Wind is at the back of the Spartans right now. Kuda wants to throw it. He'll fire it up again. A little touch pass on the sideline, caught by Herb, and it's good for a first down. They needed to get out to the 37-and-a-half yard line. And Herb comes down with the football at the 36. Great one-on-one -on -one battle between Herb and O'Shea Anderson. And Herb wins it and makes a big play. Brian Herb, the senior out of Charlotte, makes the catch. First and 10 Spartans from the 36. Middle of the field, Kuda guns it. It's caught by Medved, still on his feet down to the 10-yard line. And he is tackled right there. And you can see the swagger for the Spartans offense starting to come back, especially 
in the play of Rob Kuda. Look at how easy this is. This is just an easy, fundamental pass complete right down the middle, and they're starting to get juiced up and getting excited as they get inside of the red zone of Washington and Jefferson. Medved had four catches last week for a, a one for a touchdown. Makes the catch there. Down to the 10-yard line. It's a 26-yard pickup. First and goal for the Spartans, trailing 7 to nothing. Kuda back to throw it. Goes middle of the field again. Pass caught. Touchdown, Spartans. They go to Medved on back-to-back -back strikes. That time he catches it right at the goal line. And the Spartans, a point after kick away from tying it up. And we mentioned it before, Dave, threading the needle. Rob Kuda having the confidence and the accuracy, the pinpoint accuracy to fit a football into a tight window so his receiver can get both hands on it and trying to avoid the turnover. Well done by Kuda right there leading that drive. Demery the snap, Tasker the hold, and Carniol the kick. It is up and it is good. And the Spartans tie it up on Zach Medved's second touchdown reception of the season. 5.14 to go in the second quarter. Your score, the Spartans 7 and the President 7. Back after this 30-second timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular spectacular accommodations. Turning into a rainy night here in Cleveland. Spartan 7, President 7. Big booming kick goes all the way back into the end zone. And the Presidents will settle for a touchback as Case Western Reserve gets a fine kickoff from Juan Coon Park. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. There we go. Now our nice uh, stat layout is back. I'm sure Greg Wilson had something to do with that. Nice scoring drive by the Spartans. In fact, uh, both teams, Eddie, on the drives that resulted in a touchdown, 80 yards. Spartans went to, and both 11 play drives as well. Spartans 11 plays, 80 yards on the scoring drive. They pass it out to Zubik. He is tripped up. Nicely done by the Spartans. Aaron Weisberg. Actually, that was Adrian Cannon on the initial hit. Cannon, the backup cornerback, the sophomore, comes in and makes the stop. Nicely done. Second and 10, no gain. 4.50 to go, second quarter. Coughlin. Moving his feet in the pocket. Now gets out of the pocket. Fires it out of bounds. He had the pressure coming. Flag is thrown. And they may say intentional grounding here, Eddie. But I thought he was safely out of the pocket. But they're going to get a grounding call here against the Presidents. And I also thought that there was a receiver that was pretty close to the vicinity of where the throw ended up at. Spartans are going to decline it and force a third and 10 rather than give them an extra play. So third and 10 from the 25 yard line, 7-7 ball game, 4.42 to go in the second quarter, rain falling here at DeSanto Field, Coughlin to throw it, has some time and now he has wide open spaces as he runs for it. He slides down at the 40 yard line and scampers for a first down, a run of Let's see where they mark it, 13 yards. Boy, and that field opened up really quickly. Just too much green in front of Pete Coughlin right there. First and 10, football marked at the 38-yard line. Coughlin, a little short pass to Zubik on a slant. He gets away from the first wave of tacklers and dives out to midfield before he is finally brought down by Dayton Snyder. And I'm not sure how he escaped the sea of Gray jerseys, the first wave of gray jerseys that you saw right there, but he bursts into the secondary for more yardage to midfield. First and 10 from the 50. 
Four minutes to go before halftime. We're tied 7-7 here at DeSanto Field. Key pack matchup tonight between the Spartans and the Presidents. Case Western Reserve all time against Washington and Jefferson, 7 and 10. They dump it off to Ruffing on a screen. Gets outside the numbers, 45, 40, 35, 30, and tackled inside the 30-yard line. And again, it was Snyder on the pursuit, finally bringing down Ruffing. Yeah, not a good sign when you get a guy like Ruffing in space with multiple blockers in front of him. He just going ahead with a full head of steam right there with reckless abandon and picking up and chewing up a ton of yardage. 21-yard pickup, first and 10 from the 29-yard line. Ruffing bounces to the outside, 25-20, turns the corner, 10, and all the way in for a touchdown. The Presidents score on a 29-yard run by Ruffing. He stayed in bounds, somehow turned the corner, Eddie, and had just enough room to operate. And it's 13-7 W&J. And Dave, right before that replay clip right there, I think that W&J may have gotten away with a hold. I see a lot of arms going up in the air on the Spartan sideline looking for the penalty, but it never came. And it's unfortunate, but Washington and Jefferson gets on the board for the second time. Ted Ford for the point after touchdown. There is the snap. The kick is up. It is good. And the presidents jump in front now 14 to 7 as Ruffing has scored two touchdowns tonight. He is one touchdown away from his 50th career touchdown. So Ruffing makes it 14 to 7. Well, he showed the ability to bounce to the outside there, Eddie, and whether there was a holding or not, he was able to really use some speed there and pick up those big chunks of yardage, including the final one for the for the end zone. Yeah, no question about it. And one trait about roughing that we really haven't mentioned yet, Davis, is he's just a very stable guy. You know, his biggest run on the season is only 37 yards, which, you know, for a guy that has as much yardage and touchdowns as he has, that's really not a long run for his longest run of the season. So, you know, for him, it's more of eight yards here, nine yards here, 10 yards there. You don't see too many big bursts from him, but you did see one right there, and it resulted in six. Yeah, not just a bruiser. He is 6'1", 215, but can also run with some finesse as well. A short kickoff, and the Spartans trying to fall on it and secure the football at the 25-yard line. And they do. But that one was hard to handle as it was a short kick, and you see the pile up there. Spartans fortunately able to secure the ball. Six plays, 75 yards on the scoring drive by Washington and Jefferson. They lead it 14 to seven with 328 to go. And Dave, if you remember on the last special teams return by the Spartans, they had some similar issues where that ball was uh, up for grabs on the ground, but fortunately they're able to avoid disaster a second time and give Rob Kuda a chance to get more points on the board. Hockman lines up in the backfield with Kuda. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Kuda back to throw it. Now he wants to tuck it and run. Bounces to the outside and gets just outside the hash mark before he is tripped up. Ankle tackle recorded there by Anthony Tutino. Tutino out of Stallstown, PA. Kuda back to throw it in the quick hurry up offense. Gets away. Now he's grabbed and he's in trouble. And he is sacked deep in the backfield, all the way back close to the 15 yard line. On the pursuit for Washington and Jefferson was big number 92, Sly Ravitsky. And they say Kuda was down at the 15. That's a loss of 16 on the sack. Now looking at a third down and a 
Long way to go. Over 20. Middle of the field. Medved with the catch and a first down out across the 45-yard line. Boy, he has been the go-to receiver here in the second quarter. His third catch of the night. I was going to say, he's made some really big and timely plays. Zach Medved, the junior tight end, coming up big when the Spartans need it most. That play is huge for the momentum of the game. A 30-yard pickup, Eddie. First and 10. Out to the 46-yard line now. Kuda high arcing spiral to the right side, and it's incomplete. Looking for Justin Fan. Fan was covered on the sideline by Bryce Merrill, well, the senior. A little bit of a speed mismatch right there for the Spartans, getting Fan going deep down the field against a bigger, bulkier defensive back, and Bryce Merrill in his fourth year, but. You know, the Spartans uh, early on in the first half have not really been able to utilize that deep ball other than for Zach Medved a couple of times, as you can see Zach Medved right there. But, you know, Kuda trying to get something cooking with the deep ball. Second and 10, winded their bag, but the rain falling. Kuda back to throw it. He'll go up top again. Couple of receivers in the area. Herb dives, but can't hang on to it. Oh, he hit the turf very hard. Out about the 15-yard line. 2.34 to go. Clock stops with the incompleted pass. And the deep throws, the number of deep throws, Dave, are really starting to add up here late in the second quarter. And I think that it's clear that Kuda is trying to exploit the advantage of the wind going in his favor. He knows his receivers have the speed to beat their men one-on-one -on -one deep down the field. But, you know, again, another incompletion is just a little bit too far out of the range of the receiver. It's a great play to try to make it close, but they'll have to try it again. Spartans take a timeout as the play clock was so uh, dwindling down to one. 2.34 to go. In the second quarter, it's 14 to seven, Washington and Jefferson, third down and 10. Boy, the Spartans really uh, were bailed out by the reception by Zach Medved after that long loss on the sack, which was a minus 16. And then they hit Medved for a 30 yard pickup almost hooking up with Herb to get into the red zone. And Dave, if I recall correctly, the play with Medved, uh, the two times that they hooked up with Medved, they were both in the middle of the field. So I think Rob Kuda uh, knows where his mismatch is, trying to get his receivers to run in between the hash marks there. And they'll need to come up with a similar play again here on third and 10. Watch for Kuda throwing the ball deep down the middle of the field. Washington and Jefferson use that five defensive back set on virtually every play, not only on passing downs. Third and 10 from the 46 yard line, Kuda sprints out to the right. Now he looks deep downfield, he's in trouble, gets away from the coverage to the 45, still on his feet midfield. Bounces outside to the 40 and out of bounds at the 36 yard line. It is a first down on an 18 yard run by Rob Kuda. He saw virtually every defender face to face. And Rob Kuda channeling his inner running back right here. Just an array of moves. He refuses to go down and he changes directions about two or three times. He just so elusive in just his second season at quarterback. Such a hard guy to bring down. Not a whole lot of time to catch his breath. First and 10 from the 36 yard line of the Presidents. 14 to 7, W and J. There's an incompleted pass looking for Ethan Albers on the sideline. And you don't want to necessarily see an incompletion, Eddie, but at least it gives the Spartans some time to breathe in some oxygen here. Yeah, I mean, there's a silver lining to just about every play. And, you know, uh, running an offense that takes this big of a physical toll on you when you're constantly getting up to the line of scrimmage, you're going to need a breath here and there. So they'll get it, but they'll go back to work right here. Anthony checks in for the first time as the tailback. Station to the left of Kuda, back to throw with the pressure coming, dumps it off, pass is caught, but not much gain there as Anthony catches it out of the backfield and gets back to the line of scrimmage. And the Spartans now looking at a third and 10 from the 36 yard line of Washington and Jefferson. Right there, that was a shoestring tackle made by the senior defensive back Dan Graziano. Lucky that the Spartans didn't pick up more yardage on that play. It looks like he had more room to work with. They brought the blitz on Kuda. He got it over 
the top to Anthony, but as you mentioned, great tackle. Kuda throws it again very quickly, slant to Herb, has the catch, and he's tackled inside the 25-yard line. It's good for a first down. Well, I'll tell you what, whoever they line up as the slot receiver is getting a lot of opportunities to catch footballs. And we saw Herb before, and we see Herb again utilizing that same play. The slot receiver on the right side is getting a lot of attention in the Spartans' offense. 14-yard pickup to Herb. He's shaken up as he comes to the sideline. Cronin is in. Lined up on the outside to the right. Four receiver set. Hotman in at fullback. Kuda runs for it. 20. Gets to the outside. Inside the 15 now. Double teamed and tackled at about the 13-yard line. He picks up nine. You're looking at a second down. Very short now for the Spartans with just 49 seconds left in the first half. Spartans do not have a timeout left. Hotman. On the handoff from Kuda, power running straight ahead, gets close to the seven yard line. He has the first down and more. That will stop the clock long enough to change the yard marker. 35 seconds showing on the clock and now there's an injured Washington and Jefferson player. And so the teams head for the sidelines as they attend to the injured player trying to see who that is I believe it's Ryan Torrance the linebacker out of Latrobe PA they're taking a look at his left leg Spartans trying to tie it up it's 14 to 7 Washington and Jefferson Boy, Zach Medved has made some big catches tonight including a touchdown Brian Erb has been a tremendous possession receiver tonight Still looking at Torrance down there. Rain falling here at DeSanto Field. Players are soaked. And Dave, kind of the theme of tonight's game with this game being of such high importance for the Spartans was don't panic if we get behind early. Well, the Spartans did get behind early, but in this two minute drill, you see it's very methodical and they're staying true to who they are. They're still getting up to the line of scrimmage in the hurry up offense. But with no timeouts, a lot of times it causes you to panic. But Zach Medved and company have been playing really well in a two minute offense that involves no timeouts. That's a lot of times you get younger players that will kind of tend to panic, especially if you have no timeouts to work with. But the Spartans still going at it very methodically, but they have to put the ball into the end zone here with less than 35 seconds to go because you don't want to go into the locker room trailing by a couple points. First and goal at the seven yard line. Herb is back in. You saw the big hit he took from Jalen Morris on his last reception. Kuda goes to the middle, back of the end zone. Pass caught by Albers, touchdown Spartans. Seven-yard touchdown pass from Rob Kuda to Ethan Albers. And the Spartans pulled it within a point now with the PAT coming up. And Kuda knew exactly where he was going with the football. You're coming off of the stoppage in play. They drew up something for Albers to go deep to the back end of the end zone. And Kuda knew exactly where he wanted to throw that ball and found his man. And now trying to try, try to tie it up. Demery the snap, Tasker the hole. Here's the kick from Carniole. It is up and it is good. And we are tied 14-14 with 26 seconds left here in the second quarter. Rob Kuda with his second touchdown pass of the night. Kuda with his 20th touchdown pass of the season. Albers holds that one in. Ethan Albers, his fourth touchdown catch of the year. And so the Spartans able to move down the field, 14-14, as they prepare for the kickoff here, Eddie. I've been covering Spartans football since 2007. I don't think I can recall them ever running the hurry up at as quick a pace as they have tonight. Yeah, I mean, there has been a real sense of urgency for this offense to try to get to the line and really, Dave, just try to get every little advantage that you can get because 
you know, you're dictating how quickly the defense gets back onto the field as well, and so they want to be in control of that. Short kick bounces to the 12-yard line, brought back by the Presidents on the return, Luke Murhat, the junior out of Gibsonia, PA. 21 seconds left in the half. Return out close to the 30-yard line. So it's first and 10 from their own 30. Washington and Jefferson does have two timeouts, but they are not going to try to do anything with these last 18 seconds as Coughlin takes a knee and the teams head to the locker room after a fine second quarter by the Spartans. They tie this one up. 14 apiece here at halftime against Washington and Jefferson, ranked 15th in the nation. I, I see two officials over there now, and I only saw one yeah. before. So, yeah, you might be right. We might have been missing an official Maybe. from somewhere. Somebody forgot to tell him uh, we were ready to start again. Here is the kick. It is a short kick angling out of bounds. And Juan Kuhn would like to have a do-over, but that's not going to happen. So the kickoff goes out of bounds. They will bring the ball out to the 35-yard line. So a good start for Washington and Jefferson in that respect. They will start at the 35 in a tie football game, 14-14. But you know what, Dave, on drives in which Washington and Jefferson has had pretty good field position, the Spartans have actually been successful, especially with those first two fourth down conversions, stopping WNJ for a loss. Now they mark it ahead to the 41. Eddie, I'm not sure why that extra yardage was marked off. Ruffing is going to get the first carry and he bounces to the outside. They grab him around the legs and haul him down. And I believe that was Scott Surin on the tackle. Well, Ruffing was a workhorse in the first half. He touched the ball on the ground 14 times and also caught four passes. So that's a very durable back in the backfield. Actually, that was Sandage on the tackle. Out to throw Coughlin. Now he'll tuck it and run. Gets past the 45 and slides to the 47-yard line. K.J. Peterson there defensively for the Spartans. It'll be third down and four from the President's 47-yard line. I don't think it was a designed run right there for Coblin, but he will use his speed when he has the chance. But those Spartans linebackers, they're an awfully athletic bunch too. They've been covering the field gap to gap. Spartans, of course, playing without Mike O'Donnell, who has the broken leg and is out for the season. Jordan Esteban wearing O'Donnell's number nine jersey tonight. Third and four from the 47-yard line. Coglin dumps it off, pass is caught by Zubik. He is on the run across the 40 to the 30 to the 20, down to the 10. He will score. 53-yard scoring strike on the catch and run to Jesse Zubik. That's Zubik's fifth touchdown in seven games, and he's averaging up near 100 yards per game, but he has an ability to find the open green field and make guys miss. He was the go-to target in the first half with eight catches, so needless to say, he's the favorite target of Pete Coughlin, and he found him right there for another six points. Well, although Coughlin had made a lot of connections to a lot of different receivers, that's the first time tonight they really burned the Spartans. Here is the upcoming kick by Ford. The PAT is a line drive that is through and good. And it is a 21 to 14 lead for Washington and Jefferson after a 53 yard scoring strike to Jesse Zubik. He is out of Sewickley, PA. Avonworth High School, three catches last week, nine tonight. So Washington and Jefferson on third down. They Get the big play with the rain coming down here in Cleveland. The Spartans will try and answer in kind. You know, David, maybe this is just me and my football experiences over the last 10 years or so, but it, it feels like in a wet and rainy game, you don't see a lot of possession receiver type performances like we've seen from Zubik here tonight. He's really elevated his game in a game with national importance and a team that's hungry in the Spartans that's looking for a big upset here at home. Neither team, Eddie, going to the tried and true approach of when it's raining, keep it on the ground. 
Yeah. Both teams have been swinging yeah. it all over the field. Both Case Western Reserve touchdowns have come through the air. And now Coughlin using the passing attack as well. Looks like uh, Blake Davis will kick this one away, not Ted Ford. Wynn blowing the ball around off the tee. Cronin and Calhoun back deep for Case Western Reserve. 13.44 to go third quarter. A lot of time left in this game. It is a windy and rainy night here in Cleveland, Ohio. Glad you're with us tonight. Here is the kick from Davis. End over end kick. It will go into the end zone, and it's a touchback. The Spartans will come out and take over at the 25-yard line. Been kind of disappointing, Dave. The Spartans really haven't been able to use special teams to their favor. I mean, you got a guy in Cody Calhoun who's averaging upwards of 28 yards per return, but the kicking unit of uh, the Presidents has just been too strong, especially uh, you know late in the second quarter. So the Spartans come out on offense. The offensive line has done a nice job tonight for Cuda, giving him some time to throw it. First and 10 from the 25-yard line, 21-14, Washington and Jefferson. First possession of the second half for Case Western Reserve. Rain is really falling right now. Cuda drops back to throw it, and he has time. He guns it middle of the field. Pass is a little bit short of Herb. He tried to come back to it, but a lot of traffic there, and it's knocked down incomplete. Well, we're going to get a second look at the, the pass from Cuda, and I'm not sure if he got a real good release on it. You see a little wobble here and there from the football really working in the Spartans favor that it fell to the ground Rob Kuda still zero interceptions on the season still as amazing a stat as you will find two TDs tonight giving him 20 on the year Tim Blair was there defensively for Washington and Jefferson on that last play Kuda will try and run it now nice move breaks to the outside over the right guard and gets across the 30 yard line and dives close to the 32 that's a pickup of seven and that gives the Spartans a very manageable third down situation here. They'll snap it back to Kuda in the hurry up. He will run straight ahead. He has the first down. He takes a lick there at the 35 yard line, but has the first down. I tell you what, Rob Kuda has no problem with carrying the Spartans team on his back. That's his 13th rush, and we are in the early third quarter, and he's going to have a few more by the end of the night. They'll hand it to Hockman, the fullback. He powers his way forward out close to the 39-yard line, a pickup of three on first down for the senior, Adam Hockman. Hockman had a key run on that late second quarter touchdown for the Spartans. They give him four, second and six from the Spartans' 40-yard line, moving right to left here in the third quarter. Second down and six, Kuda to throw it. Goes middle of the field, caught by Medved. First down and more. He gets to the 45-yard line, and the Spartans pick up 15. It's a first down to Medved, who's having a career night. Well, I think Kuda wanted Lynch as the the near side receiver i think he wanted to go to him first but he found a better option in medved who had more open field to work with and now we got a couple of injured spartans on or at least one of them well medved is one and a little slow getting up one of the offensive linemen i believe that was steven Bachi, and he's okay medved is walking off under his own power as you see right there big number 10. zach medved makes another Reception for the Spartans, it's first and 10 from the 46-yard line, so give him 14 on that reception. Medved now four catches, 80 yards on the night. And, and Dave, really, just about every one of Medved's catches have come for first downs. He's been the go-to big play guy. And as you mentioned earlier, all of them coming right in the middle of the field, that soft spot of that zone coverage. Mm -hmm. Well, Spartans were ready to go. Washington and Jefferson wasn't. And they allowed the presidents to get set. Now a pass out to, to Brendan Lynch is low from Cuda. He makes the grab, but falls behind the line of scrimmage for a, about a three-yard loss. 
You know, if there's one guy you want to get more involved in this pass offense, it's Brendan Lynch. Haven't heard much from him. One catch for six yards. If you can get him involved, you can spread everybody out defensively. He lost three that time on his second catch of the night. Second and 14 now from midfield. Kuda back to throw it. He will fire a line drive pass. Middle of the field. It's caught by Albers inside the 35-yard line. Boy, that hit him right in the numbers. Yeah, Kuda's accuracy has gotten better as the game has progressed. He's not battling the wind as hardly as he was in the first quarter, so that helps. 16-yard pickup. They go up the middle. That's Kanganelli, perhaps his best run of the night as he gets to the 26-yard line. They pick up eight. Hotman gets the handoff. He goes straight ahead, has the first down and more. The Spartans are in the red zone. He's tackled near the 17-yard line. What a hole opened up for Hotman by that offensive line. I tell you what, Hockman is getting the hot hand right here. He carried a couple of linebackers on his shoulders on the way forward to the 16-yard line. Ryan DeMarinas, the left guard, opened up a big hole there for Hockman. First and 10 from the 18. Spartans operating in President's territory, and they keep it in Hockman's hands. He is hit and dropped for no gain, and a flag comes in. Each team had only one penalty in the first half. Hold coming up against the Spartans. So they have stayed away from any self-destructive penalties tonight, Eddie, up until this point. And that is something that the Spartans needed to do in this game, Dave, with the you know, the pressure of playing a ranked team. They need to play a perfect game in terms of penalties, and they've handled that really well here tonight. It's now first and 20, and the football marked back to the 28-yard line. Kuda with the pressure coming. He's in trouble. He's going down, and he is sacked. Kuda got a couple of steps ahead and might have picked up a couple of yards, but he goes down in a heap with the pressure coming and the coverage collapsing. Yeah, the pocket just fell apart right there. Not a whole lot that Rob Kuda would do. Just not enough options available deep down the field for Kuda to be able to make a play with his right arm. Second down and 18 from the 26-yard line. Kuda to throw it. Touch pass out to the far side. Pass is caught. And now they say no. It was juggled incomplete. Looked like DeFrancesco on the outside got tangled up with his receiver, ended up catching the football, but he was falling out of bounds by the time he hauled it in. There was also a flag down. Not sure if we're going to be able to see if there's a pass interference on either player. It's still it a is. great catch. But, yeah, it goes in the Spartans' favor. You got defensive pass interference on Washington and Jefferson. How about that? Well, I thought a flag came out, Eddie, and our vision is a little obstructed with the rain here. And, indeed, the marker did fly, and it's going to be first and 10 from the 11-yard line. Let's mark that down because that could be a pivotal play in this game. Spartans would have been looking at potentially a third and 18. Instead, it's first and 10 from the 11-yard line. Kuda with some room to run. Now he fires it in traffic, and it's batted down incomplete. And another flag comes out. Medved was in the area. Kuda stepped up. I thought he would run for it, Eddie, but then it was knocked down by one of the W&J defenders. Illegal man downfield, maybe? Yeah, we're going to get a verdict on it right here. It came around at about the line of scrimmage. Two penalties, actually, one of them getting declined, the first one. Illegal receiver downfield, and then they take the holding penalty. Second hold against the Spartans on this drive. Ten minutes to go here in the third quarter. It's 21-14, to 14, Washington and Jefferson. Spartans trying to answer and tie this one up. So the football is marked back now to the 21-yard line. First and 20 from the 21. They can get a first down at the one-yard line. Kuda drops back to throw. He has good protection. He'll run for it now, moving to his left, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, and upended at the 8-yard line. 
Defensive coverage by Dan Graziano to finally bring Cuda down. Cuda's going to have some bumps and bruises after this night is over. He gets leveled right there and just they took out his legs and he falls down hard, but he gets right back up trying to make another play. Football is at the 10-yard line. Second down and nine. Cuda wings it out to the numbers on the left. It's caught by Herb, but again, that short pass is low. Herb holds it in, but for virtually no gain. It's going to be third down and eight from the nine-yard line. First down marker is at the one. 9-10 to go here in the third quarter at DeSanto Field. 21-14, Washington and Jefferson ranked 15th in Division III. Spartans unbeaten in PAC play. Kanganelli is in at running back. To the left of Cuda in the shotgun. Four receiver set. Cuda looking to the right. Pressure is coming. He'll try and run it. And he gets rid of the football. Back of the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown, Spartans. Wow. What an amazing play right here. This looks like it's going to be a sack as Cuda barely able to get this football away. Watch right there. Cuda's going down in flames, but he gets the throw away. And how about the one-on-one -on -one matchup right here? Ethan Albers comes up with his second touchdown of the game. Albers just winning his matchup right there with his man one-on-one. -on -one. It does not get any bigger than that. Cuda was a falling timber when he threw that pass up for Albers. Here is the kick by Carniol. It is up. And the crucial PAT is good. 21-21 with 8.44 to go here in the third quarter. More coming up from Santo Field. First this time out on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Twenty-one, twenty-one, eight forty-four to go. Rain falling here at DeSanto Field. Rob Cuda with a scoring strike to Ethan Albers of ten yards. Albers maintained his position, even though it looked like Cuda was going to go down in a heap, and he made the catch. Very short kick he is grabbed by the upback, called in by Trevor Morrow of Washington and Jefferson. And so they get good field position as uh, Morrow makes that catch on the Juan Coon Park kick. And it looks like it'll be at the 35-yard line. Officially a nine-yard pass, Eddie, but Kuda is keeping his eyes downfield even though he was being tackled and was able to flip that one up there, and Albers comes up with it. Incredible finish to that drive, and the Spartans tie it up. Roughing goes to the 40 on the first carry of the possession, he peels off five yards. It'll be second down and five. And I tell you what, I hope we get to see that play again soon. There is so much, very little margin for error there, but it worked out the Spartans' way. They'll throw it up for grabs, pass is tipped and incomplete. It was intended for their go-to receiver tonight, Jesse Zubik. And it was thrown behind Jesse. He got a hand on it, it was up there for grabs, Gavin Sandage almost able to get his hands under it, but it falls incomplete. Third down and five from the Washington and Jefferson 40-yard line. Yeah, that play will raise some eyebrows because if you're able to come up with an interception, you're able to potentially take the lead in the next drive and start in enemy territory, but you got to make another play here on third down. Zubik in motion. Coughlin takes the snap, drops back, fires middle of the field. Again, tipped by Zubik. Pass a little behind him. And it falls incomplete, fourth and five. The Spartans' defense holds and forces a three and out. And that's what you want immediately following a Spartan score. You want to get your offense back on the field while they are in their zone. 
as they're going to hurry things up here to the line on the Washington and Jefferson punt. Mikas will punt it away. Fan is back deep. He's standing at his own 20-yard line. The rain falling harder now than it has all night. Here's the kick with the wind behind it. It bounces in front of Fan. He'll bring it back from the 15-yard line. And running laterally at first, gets across the 20 back to the 22-yard line. That was a 45-yard kick with a 5-yard return. And the Spartans will come out with the score tied at 21-21, exactly eight minutes to go here in the third quarter. And I'll tell you what, Dave, Rob Kuda really is elevating his game. He's getting better, and he's doing it all for the Spartans. 28 throws and 15 runs. That is a lot of plays for a sophomore quarterback, and we're just going to see more of that as the game goes on. They have been running an expedited hurry-up offense tonight. Spartans with a chance to march down and perhaps take their first lead of the night. Kuda will run it. Gets to the 25-yard line. He's wrapped up and driven down to the turf. Big Tory Carr, the junior defensive lineman, grabs a hold of Kuda there. And Kuda just continues to be their best and most viable option in the running game, averaging about four and a half yards a run. So you're gonna continue to do what you're good at and try to rack up more yards. Well, right there, he was at that average of four yards, second down and six, and Hockman refusing to go down, runs straight up the middle and gets the first down for the Spartans. Look at that spin move as he rips his ankle out of the grasp of the defender. First and 10 from the 32-yard line. Spartans operating in their own territory, a hard rain falling here in Cleveland. The snap goes back to Kuda. They'll hand it again to Hockman. Great running room up the middle, and that offensive line, Eddie, really starting to take control of this game right now. Yeah, we really haven't mentioned the offensive line as much as we should. I mean, they're getting a push on this front seven of Washington and Jefferson, and you know, the white uniforms continue to bring the pressure, but, you know, the Spartans are holding their ground, and they are giving a lot of room for Kuda and company. Second and one from the 41-yard line. Hockman has the first down over the right tackle and gets what he needed. It's a first and 10 for the Spartans. They move the chains. 6.36 to go, third quarter. Rain falling, wind blowing. A warm day in Cleveland for October 24th, but a miserable night weather-wise now. Rain started falling midway through the second quarter. 21-21 your score. Clock moving with 6.18 to go. Kuda looking over to the sideline, now glances back to the play clock, which is down to 10. New play signaled in. Kuda communicates that to his teammates. He's in the shotgun formation. Three receivers on the left. They'll keep it simple and go to Kanganelli. He dives across the 45-yard line, close to the 47. Spartans getting some good running production from Hockman and Kanganelli. That's going to be key, especially if it continues to be a tight football game and the rain continues to fall the way it is. And we talked about the, uh, the hurry-up offense, Dave. Well, now the Spartans are slowing things down. They got the play clock down to two, and they're taking more time being more methodical with their play choosing. Yeah, and why shouldn't they with uh, this game knotted up now? 5.28 to go. Kuda hands it to Kanganelli. Good defensive penetration there by Washington and Jefferson. They came in waves. First guy there to Kanganelli was Justin Bauer, the junior defensive end out of Pittsburgh's Brentwood High School. Boy, he wrapped him up like a boa constrictor right there. I mean, just nothing the Spartans could have done right there. Sometimes you just have to tip your cap to the defense, take a loss, and try to recover on the next play. That's a loss of three, third down and 10 from the Spartans' 43-yard line. Rob Kuda, the sophomore, takes the snap of the shotgun, three-step drop. He fires a high arcing wobbler to the left side intended for Herb who tripped over his defender. Tim Blair there defensively, but by the time the ball got there, Herb was on the ground. Well, Kuda had plenty of room to get this throw off, but the spiral a little bit wobbly right there. And fortunately he throws this one to the sidelines where all it can do is go out of bounds. And the Spartans will have to punt it away. 
So the Spartans falter, and it's fourth down and 10. Out to punt this one away is Jacob Burke. He's been very good tonight. Low snap. Now he's in trouble. Picks it up, and he'll try and run with it. They'll try and set up some blocking to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, and knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. First and 10, Case Western Reserve. After the muffed snap, Burke picks it up and rumbles for a first down. I tell you what, Lady Luck is on the Spartan side here tonight. Again, in the blink of an eye, it goes from disaster to uh, a, a tremendous outcome for the Spartans. I mean, how often do you see a, a low snap on a punt go for a first down and then something? Look, watch, the ball's on the ground here. And he has a chance to go down way back in the backfield to turn it over, but he turns this play into something, has blockers upfield, and man, that's great speed for a punter right there, I'll tell you that much. 22-yard pickup. Kuda's going to be sacked here on the first play of the drive, not the way the Spartans wanted to start the drive. He loses five. But the stadium still buzzing over that run by Jacob Burke. Burke, the fullback. Not seen any action in the backfield running the ball tonight, but boy, he rumbled that time for a 22-yard pickup. Second and 14 after a loss of four. Football at the 39-yard line of the Presidents. 3.40 to go, third quarter. We're tied at 21. Kuda runs straight ahead after taking the snap and the shotgun. Gets across the 30. Takes a big lick at the 27-yard line. That's a quick decision made by Rob Good. I mean, he juggled the snap at first, but then immediately took off with a ball right in between center and right guard and is able to make something out of nothing once again. Big hole opened up for Rob Kuda up the middle. Well, that leaves him three yards short, third and three from the 28-yard line. They need to get to the 25. This is a huge play. Third and three, under three to go, third quarter. Tied at 21 here at DeSanto Field. Bad snap goes over Kuda's head. He still has time as he picks it up. Spins in the backfield. He's in trouble now, 35, and tackled back at the 32-yard line. A loss of four. It'll be fourth and seven. Decision time now for Greg Debelak and company on what they want to do. Kuda, a little slow getting up, but he's okay. And you could see right before the ball was snapped that Rob Kuda was using that towel on his right hand to try to keep his hands dry and try to prevent a situation like that from happening. And he's lucky to get to where he was because it was looking like it was going to be a loss. But now it looks like they're going to be aggressive and go for it here on fourth and seven. They're lining up to go for it. We'll see if they may just try to draw them offside. Play clock is at four. They do get it off. Kuda's going to try and sling it downfield, and it's caught by Herb. He has free room to run, and he goes in for the touchdown, Spartans. 32-yard touchdown to Brian Herb as Kuda fires a line drive pass caught by the senior, and he looked like he got a little bit of a pick from a teammate, and it sprung him free, and he goes in for the score, and the Spartans lead at 27-21. Wow. Man, oh, man, oh, man. There were four players that could have potentially caught this ball, but luckily it's the best receiver for the Spartans in the area. The big play man, Herb, bringing it in for another Spartan six points. Herb's first touchdown of the night. Here's Carniel with the kick, and it is up, and it is good. 28 21. Case Western Reserve takes the lead on Brian Herb's touchdown on the season. That's his eighth. It's Washington and Jefferson football first, this time out on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. With 31 unique creations to choose from, there's something for everyone to love at Dave's Cosmic Subs. Meat lovers, vegetarians, and everyone in between agree that our freshly baked bread, high quality ingredients, and homemade sauces make us the best in Cleveland. Come on into Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry to experience legendary subs in a cosmic atmosphere. And don't forget, we deliver. It's as easy as dialing 216-320-0. Be the hit of the party. Order Dave's. Well, all of this started on a play 
that could have been a disaster for Case Western Reserve, the low snap when the Spartans were going to punt it away. Jacob Burke was able to scoop it up and run for a first down. The drive ultimately ends on a 32-yard strike to Brian Erb. Now we're back to action. Kerry Otis bringing it back on the kickoff for Washington and Jefferson. He's tackled close to the 30-yard line. We have less than two minutes to go, 159 left here in the third quarter, and the Spartans leading the number 15-ranked team in Division Three, Washington and Jefferson, by seven. Dave, I'm very anxious to see the Spartans' defensive reaction to having a lead for the first time in this game. You know, we talked about you know, not panicking early on, uh, trailing seven to nothing to Washington and Jefferson. Well, it's a different time for them to react. Let's see how it plays out. Here's Ruffing. He may be a big factor before this night is over with the elements as they are, but he's tripped up and tackled for no gain. It'll be second down and 10. Brian Erb joining Ethan Albers and Zach Medved as touchdown receivers tonight. Second down and 10 from the 30. Coughlin rolls out to his left. He has time, looking downfield. Now he's running out of time. He tries to run for it, but the Spartans trip him up. No gain. A sack for the Spartans. And that was pretty much a coverage sack, Eddie, because he had no where to throw it, even though he had some time to scan the field. Yeah, the junior quarterback, Pete Coughlin, feels very comfortable throwing the football across his body, moving uh, to his left, but again, no options deep down the field. And again, hard to see with the rain coming down. Third down and nine. Football at the 31-yard line of the Presidents. He drops back to throw it. A little screen pass dumped off. It's caught by Ruffing. 40. Out to the 45, to the 50. First down and a lot more. Gets into Spartans territory. Tackled at the 41-yard line. They go to the... Fine tailback out of the backfield. He can run it. He can catch it. Ryan Ruffing, he's one of the best ever in Division Three football. Well, he had a catch for 21 yards early on in the game, and this one goes for a whole lot more. Again, like Dave, like you mentioned before, most of the damage for him, for Ruffing, coming after the initial catch. He is just so dangerous when you give him room to work with. 29 yards on the pickup all the way to the case 40-yard line. Back to throw at Coglin. He's in trouble. Here come the Spartans. They sack him. Spartans record the big defensive play. We'll see who got in there first. I believe it was. Coming in there to knock him down, Nate Knockhazel. Knockhazel bringing the pressure right there, getting right up in the grill of Pete Coughlin. That's how you have to disturb a successful quarterback is make him feel uncomfortable and make him know about your presence. That's the end of the third quarter. It ends on a big Spartans sack by Knock Hazel. As Coughlin was tackled back in Washington and Jefferson territory at the 48-yard line. The all-important fourth quarter is coming up. Your score, Case Western Reserve 28, Washington and Jefferson 21. Back after this timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Three quarters in the books here at DeSanto Field. Spartans defense on the field right now trying to hold off a very potent Washington and Jefferson offense averaging 307 yards through the air per game. They fire it. It's caught out at the 40-yard line. Daniel Liss holds that one in. They got the sack yardage back. It'll be third down and 10 now from the 40-yard line. This is where they were after the roughing catch and run a few moments ago. We'll check the third quarter numbers for you as we get a chance. Coughlin back to throw it. Good protection. 
Now they chase him. He gets rid of the football, and it's going to be incomplete. Spartans picked it off, but out of bounds. Cody Calhoun caught that one, but after it was already out of bounds, there is a flag down on the play. I think it's going to be on Washington and Jefferson. Could be wrong. I think I might have seen a hold right there. That's what it looks like. It's going to be against the white uniforms here. and They got a hold of a gray jersey that they should not have touched. Well, it's a holding penalty, but I think it'll be declined here by Case to force a fourth and ten. So they take the incompleted pass rather than the yardage on the penalty. And you're looking at a 57-yard field goal attempt here, so they're going to try to punt it away and pin Case deep with 14.23 to go here in the fourth quarter. And the Spartans are going to get the football back with a seven-point lead. Assuming no funny business here. Here is the kick. And the Spartans came after it and uh, did not get it. I don't believe that was touched, but it certainly hurried up punter Kevin Mikas. I don't think it was either, but a lot of times when you see a guy coming straight at you and you hear some footsteps, the ball just comes off of the right leg a little strange and the Spartans were able to bother the punter there just enough to you know influence the outcome of the play but you know the ball still rolls yep. inside of the 15 yard line so not ideal field position for Rob Kuda and company but again we've seen Kuda uh, and the Spartans offense go deep inside of their own territory and come away with scores so they're going to stay hot and try to keep throwing the football and you're right the spartans have seemed undaunted by poor field position tonight there's goes kuda across the 20 to the 25 out near the 26 yard line and he's finally brought down so just like that he doubles the field position with a 13 yard run along the hash mark yeah i, I spoke with kuda earlier this week and he said one of the biggest beneficiaries for him was having ran this offense his senior year in high school so he's got plenty of experience with an up-tempo offense in just his second year with the Spartans. They are running an up-tempo plus tonight. They'll hand it up the middle. Kanganelli I believe carried the football. Let's see. No it's Hockman. Hockman gets the uh, handoff from Kuda and it's second down and five after he peels off five yards. Again, they will run it. Hockman straight ahead running, gets the first down. Back-to-back -back carries by the senior fullback. He's out ahead of the 41-yard line. Spartans have a new set of plays. First and 10, they continue in the hurry up. Kuda hands it ahead. They dive ahead for a couple. Now Hockman will come off and Kanganelli comes on. Well, the running by Cuda is really setting up the uh, power runs by Kanganelli and Hockman. You try to spread the defense out with the speed of Cuda, and then you try to bury them deep inside of their own territory with, uh, with the power runs there. And with the hurry up, they've been very challenged in terms of getting the right matchups and personnel changes that they would like right now. Play clock down at eight. Second down and eight from the 43-yard line. Kuda will keep it. He takes off over the left side. Cannot turn the corner. Might have picked up three. He gets across the 45 down to the 46-and-a-half-yard line. It'll be third down and five. So a big play coming up here. Spartans leading at 28-21, 12.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. Kuda adjusting his long sleeves, looking over to the sideline now, Dr dries his hands off with a white towel hanging at his waist. Kanganelli to his right, four receivers in the game, play clock at five, he takes the snap, fires a quick pass out for first down yardage, it's caught by the slot receiver, that's Brendan Lynch. Lynch hauls it in, his third catch of the night. First and 10, Case Western Reserve. Good to see Lynch getting involved here, and the president's defensive backs gave him a little too much room right there. Great to see the Spartans exploiting that opportunity handed to them by the president's defense. First and 10 from the 43-yard line. Spartans operating in president's territory right now. Kuda hands the football to Kanganelli. Across the 40, down to the 37-yard line. Pickup of close to six on first down. 
And, boy, you get those big first down runs there. It opens up the playbook, Eddie. Yeah, it really does. I mean, they can run just about any play that they want to, and they know they're going to get some sufficient yardage out of it. I mean, Washington and Jefferson, they looked strong early in the first quarter defensively, but ever since then, the Spartans' offense has been able to exploit some holes, and they need to adjust to that. Second down and four. Football is resting at the 37-yard line. Spartans working left to right with the wind at their back. Rain falling here in Cleveland. Kuda sprints out to his right. He fires middle of the field. Double coverage, but the pass is caught. Completed pass down to the 31-yard line. That's Lynch again, or now they say it's incomplete. It's a close call. We'll get another look at it right there. Not really seeing the ball on the ground from that angle anyways, but just not the right angle for us to, to see what happened there, but it's going to be third down and four. Third and four, football still at the 37-yard line. 11 minutes to go, fourth quarter. There goes the ball on the ground. Kanganelli is tripped up, nicely defended there by Dan Graziano. And it'll be fourth down for Case in Washington and Jefferson territory and decision time for Greg Debelak. Each team has all three timeouts left. Spartans lining up to go for it. And they are two for two already. Going to try to make it three for three. They only need two yards. Fourth and two from the 35-yard line. They need to get to the 33. Kuda deep in the shotgun. Takes the snap at the 40-yard line. He wants to run it. And he spins as he hits the pile. He's close. They are going to stop the clock, and I think we're going to have a measurement coming up. Yeah, I think he got it. I think on the second effort right there, he falls on his back, but might have been just barely able to get the first down. No, it looks like they're not going to give it to him. And no measurement. They say it's Washington and Jefferson football. He ends up just short of the first down. The football is marked at the 34-yard line, and the Presidents take over on downs. Good defensive Stop there on fourth down for W and J. Coglin wings it out to Liss on the outside. Gets across the 35 and down close to the 37-yard line. It's a pickup of three. Again, we want to compliment and thank our folks at Media Vision, Mike Becker, and the great replays that we're unveiling tonight. First time we've been able to bring you replays during our uh, case football coverage. Back to throw Coughlin. Pressure coming. Still some time. Now he has grabbed. He throws it, and it looks like it was potentially caught on the far side, but it's still going to go for a loss. Coughlin taking a page out of Kuda's book. Yeah. Half tackled and is able mm -hmm. to still get the pass away. Oh, but you still love to see that the Spartans' defensive front is continuing to bring the pressure and get the pressure, trying to make Coughlin feel uncomfortable and He's barely able to get that throw away. Craig Debelak has to be proud. That was Dayton Snyder on the defensive pressure. Third and seven. Coglin back to throw. They come after him again. Gets rid of it to Liss at the 40-yard line. They come at him in waves. He's short of the first down. He's tackled near the 40. That's where his forward progress will be marked at the 41. It's a four-yard pickup, and it's fourth and three, and the Spartans defense holds. Well, you know, the old saying goes, uh, one is none and two is one. So the Spartans getting the unit defensive tackle right there and a big stop. And what do we have going on here? Officials now are going to say there's a timeout taken by Case Western Reserve. 9.15 to go, fourth and three for Washington and Jefferson. And the Spartans will get the ball back, leading it by seven. 28-21, the go-ahead strike to Brian Erb. And uh, hopefully at some point we can take a look at that last touchdown again. Brian Erb, the 32-yard pass from Rob Kuda on a ball that was uh, thrown in to a crowd, and Herb somehow came up with it and then sprinted the last 20 yards for the end zone for his first touchdown of the night, his eighth of the year. That gave the Spartans a 27-21 lead. Carney will kicked it through for a seven-point advantage. Here you see the numbers on the scoreboard, 9.15 to go. That's, I guess, the most important. And again, looks like we're going to see the similar formation that 
forced a Greg Debelak timeout before. They're trying to pull something here, Washington and Jefferson is. Well, they get back now in a more conventional alignment. And there's the snap back to the punter. And it's a low line drive kick again, but it takes a president's bounce and it goes inside the 30 yard line this time. Kevin Mikas living a charmed life. Those last two punts shanked a bit, but they take a favorable hop for Washington and Jefferson. No return. Football is going to be placed at the 28-yard line, I believe. So that's going to end up being a 31-yard kick. Not bad. Not, I don't think it got more than six feet off the ground the whole way. Yeah, not bad at all. But, you know, the Spartans, as hot as they've been on offense, still looking to push forward. 9.04 to go. 28-21. Spartans leading it by seven. Kuda sprints out of the pocket. Makes for the outside. Now tries to cut it back and gets inside the numbers. And he's tackled near the 31-yard line. A hard-earned three yards for the sophomore, Rob Kuda. That's got to be a career high now. 20 carries for Rob Kuda for about 75 or so yards. So he's continuing to run the ball down the president's throats and continuing to have some level of success. And as you mentioned earlier, Eddie, I thought an astute observation, and that is that that has helped to open up the other avenues. Ball on the ground. It's a fumble after the snap. Let's see who has it. They pile up. Officials will try and untangle this web of football players and see who has the football. There was some miscommunication there, and it looks like the Spartans are able to keep it. Adam Hockman, I believe, was the man who fell on it. He was uh, tied up with Cuda there as the snap came back from Gage Blair. Spartans really, in general, have done an excellent job of protecting the football here tonight. And, you know, there, there's going to be some weird things that will happen on a rainy night like tonight, like the ball just slips out of your hands or, you know, just a poor transfer. But, you know, really, they have done a phenomenal job of protecting the football. They just got the playoff. Kuda throwing it. It's batted down. Incomplete. Defensive coverage there just uh, sticking the paw up there and knocking it down that was Justin Bauer the defensive end Spartans looking at a fourth and nine so they had the ball with a seven point lead unable to do anything with it 748 to go here in the fourth quarter 28 21 Case Western Reserve locked in a classic tonight with Washington and Jefferson only the second meeting between these teams since 1985 Presidents won last year in Washington. Here is the kick, a low snap, but Burke wow. gets a high Look booming at that punt one away. It's going to bounce and go into the end zone for a touchback. But my goodness, Jacob Burke, I think just absolutely flattened that football as he punted that one away after a low snap. Wow, unbelievable. Yeah, the second consecutive low snap for the Spartans in the punting game. And this one rolls all the way back beyond the end zone. That football is still bouncing on its way. Well, the football, the line of scrimmage was the 29. So a 71-yard punt with the 20-yard touchback netting 51 yards. That's uh, some kind of a kick. Here's Ruffing, bouncing to the outside, trying to turn the corner. Flag's coming in. He's tackled near the 25-yard line. The penalty marker thrown, 7.32 to go fourth quarter. Holding is the call against the Presidents. And you know you're playing really good football. Both teams are when you have a low amount of penalties. We've only got three penalties apiece. So, you know, as you said, Dave, this is a classic matchup right here, and both teams playing great disciplined football, but Spartan's going to try to make the most of this first and 20 here for the White Unis. And a very clean game played despite a driving rain that's just been uh, relentless tonight. Coughlin throws it. Zubik makes the catch and tackled near the 15-yard line right in the middle of the field. The Spartans got to him. Trying to see who picked him up there on the tackle right there in the middle of the field. Looks like it was Tyler Doty who's made some big plays tonight for the Spartans. Second down and 15 
from their own 15-yard line. Washington and Jefferson with the ball trailing case by seven. Again, over the middle of the field, caught by Zubik. Here he goes to the 30, to the 40, down the sideline, 50, to the 40. Angles back inside the number, still on his feet at the 30. Now is going to be tackled near the 25-yard line. Boy, oh boy, I tell you what, those are some textbook moves right there, and it's not every day that you get that wide open. Spartans defense fell a little bit asleep right there, but watch him cut it back inside. He feels where his blockers are. He changes directions there again. Great play. Ruffing, bouncing to the outside from the 27, gets to the 20, turns the corner down to the 15, close to the 10-yard line. Ruffing with a power run to the outside. They have gone from their own 15 all the way down to the 10-yard line of the Spartans in two plays. They pitch it to Ruffing. Breaks to the outside again to the five and is met there by the Spartans and knocked out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Well, they pitch it to him to try to get him into the flat. That's where he's really crazy successful and he blows through a couple of defenders like he usually does. Just some more forward progress for the young running back. Second and goal from the three-yard line. Coughlin looks over to the sideline. Boy, what a change in fortunes for Washington and Jefferson on the last three plays. They have covered nearly the entire field. Trying to tie it up. 28-21. They pitch it to Ruffing again. He cuts back to the inside. He's in for the touchdown. Three-yard touchdown run by Ryan Ruffing. Ruffing's third touchdown of the night. Well, there's just no stopping him. I mean, this is a man on a mission right here who's got plenty of experience being the top dog in this offense and one of the top backs in the league. So he's going to get his fair share of, of scores here and, and an approaching 50 touchdowns altogether. That is his 50th career. Yep, You're exactly there it is. right. Most among all active Division Three players. Here is Blake Davis with a crucial extra point. Let's see if the Spartans can make a play here defensively. Here is the kick. It is up, and it is good. So we are deadlocked. 28-28, 5.34 to go in the fourth quarter here at DeSanto Field. Back with more after this 30-second timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Washington and Jefferson presidents march down the field, boosted by a 58-yard pass reception by Jesse Zubik. Zubik, the sophomore, he is having a night. He is approaching the 200-yard mark. We'll get our stats delivered here. 11 catches, a buck 91. So he is burning close and has been ju really just as big a factor as roughing has been. Here's the kickoff. The Spartans will get it back. It is a short kick and it is muffed and the Spartans are able to fall on it. Spartans again dancing on the edge of the cliff there as they get the football secured at about the 28 yard line. Very short kick and it was uh, Touched by about three players. I think that was Weisberg down there, maybe Peterson. And uh, Cody Calhoun all diving in there to try to gather the football in. They did. So here is Kuda back out with the offense and plenty of time, Eddie. With five and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter, we are tied at 28. And the Spartans will try an effective drive to retake the lead. Kuda sprints to the outside. Lots of room downfield. Now he'll get rid of the football. High arcing spiral, and it is going to be caught by Herb. 
in President's territory at the 39-yard line. Boy, how do you like Rob Kuda's ability to extend plays and make something out of a potentially dangerous situation? I mean, there's potentially one sack right there, potentially a second one right there. He gets the throw off and finds his man. Herb has been their big play guy deep down the field. Just a spot-on throw by Kuda under duress. All the way to Herb at the 39-yard line of the Presidents. Kuda throws it to the outside to Herb. Makes the catch at the 35. Penalty marker down to the 30. Still on his feet. Middle of the field. 20 to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. He's into the end zone for a touchdown. Spartans will see what the flag is all about. Well, there's a lot of receivers blocking. But this one is going to go against the boys in white. How do you like that? A great signature move by Herb right there, and he carries it all the way to the end zone. Boy, how do you like the Spartans' offense here tonight? It was a roughing the passer penalty against Washington and Jefferson declined, and it's Herb with a 39-yard catch-and-run touchdown, and the Spartans lead it 34-28, to 5.03 to go. Spartans used exactly 30 seconds to score. Ben Carniol will kick it out of the hold of Tap Tasker. There is the snap by Shannon Dimery. The hold, the kick is up, and it is perfect. Spartans lead it 35 to 28. Both teams striking very quickly. Washington and Jefferson getting the big catch and run by Zubik. Back to back. Crucial receptions by Herb as the Spartans answer. Yeah, I tell you what, Dave, I think it's going to boil down to who comes down with the one defensive stop that's going to win this football game. I mean, these, these two quarterbacks have been going at it all afternoon and evening long, and they've just been answering each score. I mean, I, I really can't believe we were scoreless after one, and then all the scoring has picked up with the flip of a switch, basically, and we still have five minutes to go in this game. So the scoring is coming in bunches, and it's not showing any signs of slowing down. It was a defensive battle in the first 15 minutes, but it has been anything but that once the second quarter got started. 35-28, Case Western Reserve. Brian Erb weaving his way through traffic. And scoring his second touchdown of the night, and Herb is now over the 100-yard mark receiving. Eddie, he's at 147. And how do you like Kuda continuing to keep his accuracy up at 21 of 35, 60%, 278 yards, and again, a five-touchdown day, still no interceptions. Incredible. 23 touchdowns on the year, no picks. Touchback as Juan Kuhn Park slams that one into the end zone. 5.03 to go. The Spartans' defense last week came up big at Geneva. Held the Golden Tornadoes to 124 total yards of offense, the lowest amount ever allowed by a Greg Debelak team. And now they need to come up with a big defensive effort against a much tougher offense in Washington and Jefferson. Roughing straight ahead is wrapped up and picks up one, maybe two as they get the drive started at the 25-yard line. Second down and eight from the 27. When Ruffing is on the field, as well as Zubik, those are two very imposing weapons. Now Coglin in trouble, looking downfield. Spartans will get him for a sack. He got back to the line of scrimmage, the original line of scrimmage, the 25-yard line, but he's finally brought down by the Spartans. And again, Dayton Snyder. He has had a tremendous game on the defensive line. Yeah, really the entire front seven has. I mean, that's the fourth time that they've been able to drop Pete Coughlin for a loss. Four sacks of a really elite quarterback at the Division Three level. you got to keep that up. Third down and ten. Four minutes to go, fourth quarter. Spartans up by seven. Coughlin in trouble again. He's tripped up and sacked. Spartans' Nate Knockhazel with another sack tonight. He had one earlier, and he trips up Coughlin coming from the blind side. Ankle tackle, and it's fourth and 15. Knockhazel, the left end 
out of Pittsburgh. Same hometown area as many of these Washington and Jefferson players. So you know he has enjoyed those two big sacks tonight. Timeout taken, fourth and 15. Football is at the 20-yard line. 3.40 to go with the Spartans leading at 35-28. That last play, so we'll take a look at it here. Coglin getting away from Snyder there. And I think that was the that was the earlier sack. And then Nakes will have the big one to create fourth down, but Coglin in many ways similar to Kuda. Eddie, in terms of being able to keep a play alive, but uh, looking downfield, just no one was, no one was open, and once he tried to make a break for it, Knock Hazel able to get to him. Knock Hazel has been knocking on Coughlin's door all evening long, and that that is a huge sack. I mean, you got less than four minutes, you're up by seven, and you're going to get the ball back. Now you're in clock killing mode. There's the low line drive kick, and. It's going to take another good bounce. Well, he is excellent at uh, getting those uh, end-over-end -end bounces and adding yardage onto the punts. Kevin Mikas with another nice kick, and it rolls all the way down to the 40-yard line. Dave, I'm really curious to see the pace of the Spartans' offense coming out here. You've got 3.31 to go. You're up by 7 as I said before, you're in clock killing mode. I mean, you're still ultimately looking to get first downs. That's still your goal. But, you know, as far as the initiative is concerned, they're, they're really not going to be looking to hurry things up here. They want to chew off as much time off the clock as they possibly can. There's no doubt about that. Three timeouts left for Washington and Jefferson, so they have them all in their back pocket when they want to use them. Spartans will keep it on the ground. Hockman gets the initial carry. Picks up one, second down and nine. Hockman will stay in. Here comes Kanganelli. So how often do you see the Spartans offense with two men in the backfield with Kuda? Not very. 3.05 to go. Clock continues to run. Mike Sirianni holding those timeouts. Seven-point lead for the Spartans, 2.55 to go, fourth quarter, 35-28. Kuda will keep it straight up the middle, and he has running room, and he runs into the linebacker as he gets close to the 49-yard line. He's short of the first down. He was hit and dropped there by Luke Merhot, and a timeout's going to be taken now by Washington and Jefferson, 2.43 to go. They have two timeouts left. And the Spartans leading this game by seven, trying to pull the upset here at home. And Dave, I, I think if the Spartans get the first down, I'm not sure if Washington and Jefferson uses a timeout here. I think you stop the clock because you have a chance to force a fourth down here. And if you do, you're going to get the ball back. But, I mean, the plays keep getting bigger and bigger the deeper we get into this football game. And, and you know, Washington and Jefferson knows that they have to get their defense off of the field uh, right here and right now, because otherwise they're going to have to dig into those invested timeouts that they have. They still got two of them, but you know the Spartans' offense—if they come up with a conversion here, you're in the driver's seat for the rest of the game. This is the big play of the game: third down and one. The football in Case Western Reserve territory at the 49-yard line. They need to get to midfield for a first down. They have a seven-point lead at 35 to 28. Kuda, plenty of time on the play clock. He takes the snap. They hand it up the middle, and it looks to be good for a first down. That's Hockman getting the Spartans the all-important first down. Tell you what, he, he barely got it, but he got it. A first down is a first down is a first down. It's a new set of downs. The chains move. Dante Cappuccione leading the way there, and Hockman is able to get the big yard and a half to give Case a first down. 2.19 to go now. Clock moving with almost two minutes left here in this football game. Kuda on the run himself after faking the handoff. And boy, he takes a lick as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. My goodness. 
Cuda was absolutely leveled. Well, you hate to see the sophomore taking a hit like that. Two guys converging at once. Ryan Torrance was in there. Timeout taken by Washington and Jefferson. 2.04 to go. One timeout apiece now for these teams. Torrance leading with the helmet there a little bit. I, I, I was going to say very close to a uh, helmet to helmet play right there. Very close. Kuda appears to be okay. Can't really tell. I'm trying to look out the uh, the cracks we have in our uh, our windows here. I think the rain might have slacked off a little bit. I don't see a reflection up against the light, so I'm, I'm guessing you're right. I'm guessing it has held off a little bit here late in the fourth. Second down and nine. There's Hockman carrying, dives ahead close to the 46-yard line. Pick up of three. It's right. going to be third down, and Washington and Jefferson will use their final timeout. And I think there's no surprise there. It wasn't going to be Kuda running the ball after he took that hit. Third down and seven. So right now, Eddie, two minutes to go, third and seven, the football at the 46-yard line. If the Spartans are able to convert here, it's over. But a third and seven, much different now than the third and one they were looking at a few moments ago. And now I think Greg Debelak is thinking about, do I unleash Rob Kuda and let him throw this football? I mean, you've got... Almost 300 yards racked up in the passing game in this football game. And with Kuda's ability to keep the ball out of harm's way, why not roll the dice and try to find one of your receivers and try to move the chains that way? If the Spartans fail to get the first down, they can certainly look at pinning Washington and Jefferson deep. But as we saw, they can march down the field very quickly and, and get into scoring position within a couple of plays. Third and seven. Kuda in the shotgun. Arms extended to the line of scrimmage. Takes the handoff. He'll try and run it to the right side. He's going to be tripped up as he gets back across midfield. Well short of the first down. In fact, lost a yard. And it's going to be fourth down and eight. Football at the 47-yard line. A Washington and Jefferson injured player. Crowd a little suspicious there, but uh, I don't think there's any doubt that the player was injured. That's uh, Torrance holding his right arm very still. Well, that play just did not develop. They snipped it out very well. Dan Graziano was there as well as Torrance. Fourth and eight from the 47-yard line, 146 to go. It looks like the presidents are going to get at least one more shot here to tie it up. 35-28 Spartans. Spartans did not even think about throwing the ball on that possession, keeping it exclusively on the ground. You see that last play. Torrance making the tackle. He was not going to let go of the legs of Rob Kuda. It's been a rainy, windy night here in... Cleveland, Ohio tonight on the Case Western Reserve campus. Spartans are going to have to come out and punt this one away. I'm not sure what the holdup is here. Officials are all looking at each other. And now they're going to have to get together and talk things over. Spartans coaching staff going nuts down there. Now they're going to want to, I think, Reset the clock. And I think they want 33 on the play clock. I think it went down to 33 and then got reset for some reason. 131 is showing on the clock right now. The Spartans, Eddie, can effectively let this one run all the way down and take a timeout. And they have clearly have no initiative to get onto the field before that clock winds down. So that's going to erase another now 16 seconds. We're going to be under a minute when the Spartans punt this one away. 
Yeah, and why not? I mean, what's the difference between fourth and eight and fourth and 13 in this instance? I mean, you've got a punter with a golden leg, so why not milk that clock for what it's worth? They actually do take the penalty and not use the timeout, so you're right. They mark it back five yards, and that actually gives Burke a little more room to work with. As he's back now, the football is at the 48 yard line of the Spartans. Back deep is Luke Merhat. Burke waiting on the snap. 57 fateful seconds left in this football game and Case leading it by seven points, 35 to 28. Here is the kick from Burke and boy, he blasts another one. That's going to go into the end zone. So Burke taking the direct approach. He did not try to angle that football. Instead, he just powers it into the end zone. It's a touchback. A 53-yard kick, 33-yard net. They come out to the 20-yard line. And Dave, I've never seen a punter with this big an influence in the game at the Division III level in, in many years. I haven't seen it. He's been excellent. Sprinting out, Coughlin, looking downfield, throws it, and it's caught. Wide receiver makes the catch, and that is Zubik, but he's at the 25-yard line, a meager five-yard pickup, but he does get out of bounds. Washington and Jefferson, no timeouts left. Case up 35, 28, 44 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Coughlin back to throw, looking downfield, rushes out of the pocket, fires it, middle of the field, it's caught by Liss, 40, down to the 45-yard line. And they'll mark him down at the 44. It's good for a first down, and here they are, knocking on the door of midfield. 35 seconds left. They hurry to the line. Coughlin takes the snap. Back to throw. Running around in the pocket. Gets rid of the football, and it's out of bounds. That will have to bring a flag out, I would think. Yep, there it is. It was late, but it came out. He was not out of the pocket. And no receiver in sight either. No one in the area where that ball landed, and it's going to be intentional grounding. Well, Coughlin obviously did not want to take the sack, so he just fired the football away, I think hoping he might be able to get away with it. But you're right, there was no one in the area that could even possibly be construed as a receiver. 27 seconds left now, they'll walk it off. And I'll guarantee you this, Eddie Jansen, the Spartans have two or three guys keeping an eye on Jesse Zubik. Oh, yeah, I mean, you have to think at least, at the very least, double team with an extra guy spying him down. I, I mean, just an amazing night for him as all eyes going to be on Zubik as well in this passing game. Well, they're again having some trouble with the time on the clock that they want. They have not yet marked off any penalty yardage. And I'm not, did the, did the Spartans decline that penalty? Second they down and 10. Have. They'll snap it back to Coughlin. Football at the 44 yard line. Coughlin looks to throw it, fires deep downfield, and it is going to be knocked down. Almost intercepted by Cody Calhoun. Target was the tight end, Asa Kostelnak. He caught a pass earlier tonight. That time it was almost intercepted. Only 10 seconds left in the football game now. And there is a flag down on the field. It's going to go against the Spartans. I did not catch the uh, the signal, Eddie. It was a flag laying in the backfield, and it's a big one. It moves the football all the way to the 44-yard line of the Spartans, and it's first and 10 with 10 seconds left. Now a new quarterback is in. They throw it downfield. That one's intercepted. Spartans are going to win it. Intercepted by the Spartans. It's picked off by Case Western Reserve. It looks like Nick Kwan got the interception. Nick Kwan. His second INT of the year. And with a new quarterback in there, he dramatically underthrows this ball and right into the arms of the waiting Nick Kwan and the Spartans come away 
on a really a national stage against a ranked team. They come up with the victory, and this program is going places, Dave. Victory formation with two seconds to go. Quan intercepts Alex Rouse. The sophomore who came in for Coughlin. His only pass attempt of the night is picked off. 